What's up, you guys? It's Bradley here. So Matt Baloney was actually a 9-11 truther during the time of this album, and it actually plays a very integral part into the lyrics of this project. Now, this is something I didn't know until the very end of this stream, which I decided at the point, because it was such a shocker to me that I just stopped recording, I didn't really know how to handle the rest of the album. Spoiler alert, I didn't miss anything. The last leg of this album is boring as a mother Put me to sleep. Okay, in fact, it was so boring that I, cons uh, I considered taking a nap before coming and doing this recording and editing this video, I decided against it. Anyways, uh, the unexpected consequence though of this information is because listening to this album, nothing really clicked with me or made sense, even knowing that it was a post 9-11 album and it probably had something to do with that, knowing that Matt was a 9-11 uh, was an inside job truther kind of person actually made this entire album click. You would think that that would be a bad thing, but funny enough, it actually made all the music on this album, especially in the first half more enjoyable. As, uh, as it actually showed that there was an inspiration for creating this album and it made the sounds hit a lot harder. Yeah, so the, the unexpected result is actually this album grew on me uh, significantly. The majority of the first half has, so I will, uh, I will gladly talk about that. So sit back and enjoy this video. It's going to be a wild ride. I'm really scared that Brad is not going to go into this with an open mind and it'll all be for the sake of comedy. Crumpet, one of my mods, says, yeah, me too. I saw a comment on one of his recent reactions that said something like, Brad liking or disliking an album is dependent on the mood he is in when listening to it. This is the reason I hate Muse. I hate all Muse albums. I hate all Muse music. Disgusting. Okay, what's up, you guys? My name is Bradley. I have a Brad taste in music, and today I am reacting to T Pose, the album. That's right, Absolution, the album where it's the spooky shadow people coming through, and I hate it because it's funny. Ah, ah, ah. Oh man, I make myself laugh with these great jokes. This album is considered to be as good as the previous one. Uh, but I, I say bullshit. You know why? Because Muse fell off. I heard one song from this album and I was like, yes, it sounds like it's the good shit that I remember from the previous album, but it's moving in a bad direction. This is almost like foreshadowing a very negative event. I also feel like this album cover is uh, foreshadowing the music itself. As you can see, the spooky shadow people... Um, but you don't actually see them. You only see the guy's reaction to it with, uh, with these shadowy figures. I feel like is... Uh, a deep way of saying that you can't actually see the good music, but you could see a shadow of what could be there. All right? Anyways, I hate Muse, all right? Muse fans will eat up anything. They don't like good music. They don't care about quality. They don't care about good, all right? It just, it's all garbage. It's all disgusting. Muse fans are the type of people to think that we are fucking it's the greatest album closer of all time. Of all time. I'm just saying. I am recording. All right, now that I got that out of my way, what's up, you guys? Muse fans are molding right now. This album came out in 2004, which uh, is coincidentally about four years after Kid A and about seven years after uh, OK Computer, just for reference. You know, they're just, there's no reason I'm bringing that up for any particular reason, you know, I'm just, you know, just bringing it up there as, as don't, don't pay attention to any of these details, okay? 15 songs, an hour in material. This is considered possibly Muse's best album. Yeah, and uh, a lot of people love this shit. I really enjoyed the previous album, like, a lot. And I, d I am doing a lot of memeing, I am doing a lot of, you know, pissing off people, but to be honest, this is, this is probably gonna be an alright listen, at the least, so, uh... You know, with that being said, let's just get started with the first track, the intro. Okay, it's a march. Apocalypse, please. So someone sent me in this song yesterday, and I won't lie, I completely cringed at the rhyming of emergency and urgency. I, I genuinely find that to be so bad, and it's hard to even explain. <laughs> what the fuck is this? <laughs> 
the Willy the People. Yeah, I find rhyming emergency and urgency to be so unbelievably cringe and to be foreshadowing what they would do on Will of the People. Yes, my first impression of this album was pretty negative. That is, uh, that, that is true, but hopefully they are going to actually, like, build together a cool narrative with these T-Pose people. The Muse fans are at a war right now, and it's so funny to me. It is literally so fucking hilarious. It started with ART, like, because they were all, you know, in their own little, you know, self-affirmation bubble about Will of the People. Oh my god, Muse is back. They released the best album in 20 years with Will of the People. And then ARTV came out and said, rock on wrong, Will of the People. And then they're like... Oh, he gave it a 5 out of 10. These disgusting, terrible reviewer. Guys, this is why I hate music reviewers. Terrible, disgusting. And then your boy came through and said, 5 out of 10? Are we listening to the same album? This shit's a 1 out of 10. And then the world was like, Ah, rabble, 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 And I was like, But people were especially pissed off because I think there was an internal crowd of people who were like, yeah, the song kind of sucks dick, uh, y you know, the, but of course they were exiled from society for speaking against uh, the, the, the higher-ups of Muse. Then Fantano came through with the Not Good and called it one of the most embarrassing rock albums of the last decade. And I was like, mm. <laughs> I was like, you motherfuckers, you got so, you, you know what I mean? I was like, it, it felt good to stir the pot, right? But he just threw a turd in the punch bowl and I, ah. Man, that felt so good. Were they doing this on the last album? Just out of curiosity, because I, I I did really enjoy the last album. Were they were they doing this horrible rhyming crap? No, they weren't. Notice how, like, none of this rhymes, right? And that's why it's good. It's good because it doesn't have to force rhymes in, because rhymes, I'm telling you right now, makes your shit sound like some kind kindergarten or crap when you're trying to make something big and epic. As soon as you start saying, We need a miracle. We need something biblical. I start going, What is this, fucking Disney? Exactly, like Dr. Seuss crap. You don't agree if the song sounds great? I, my brain just mouth. I, I... I know, uh, that's the thing, is I know I'm not wrong on this one, because I know... <laughs> I, I feel like I'm looking for a, a deeper experience. There's a certain point where lyrics can become corny and cheap, but I think instrumentation still matters more than lyricism. Yeah, well, here's the thing. And you guys are, I'm sorry, but this, this may upset you. There are songs that do both well. And guess what? You know what's even more shocking? There are Muse songs that do both well. So it's a downgrade. Oh, it sounds great. Why is this in my recommended go do something productive, you bum? You do realize that that you're scrolling through YouTube, clicking on some random guy reacting to Muse, while this guy is, of course, one, building his reputation up as listening to more music, expanding his musical palette, and doing it to an audience of what is likely to be a thousand people. As far as I'm concerned, all right, you don't look so good right now. I'm just saying, you might you might want to take a step back and uh, learn your place. All right. <laughs> Calling the kettle black. You know what's so funny? I'm not even comparing this to Radiohead because I've gotten over that. Like, I feel like I've gotten over that comparison because Radiohead isn't about making songs that sound like the end of the world. You know, it's more like an internal, dramatic, emotional end. You know what I mean? It feels like Muse is ripping off themselves. The best parts of the last album, it's just doing what they did before, but just slightly worse. It feels like a tiny step down for me. And unfortunately, because of that, there's no reason to return. May you have one apocalypse? Uh... 
I agree. The outro was fantastic. And uh, hold on, who was who was making that point there? Yeah, Gil is making a point here by saying the production's a step up. I think the production of this sounds great. Um, unfortunately, the one thing that is a step down on this, which is the lyrics, does matter a lot to me. I don't really care if it's being more cohesive, if it's sacrificing the seriousness for goofiness, um, because it kills the illusion for me. But that being said, um, Apocalypse Please is genius. I, I think this song is truly genius. Um, but you know what? Let's ask Walter White what he thinks. From what uh, I saw, you know. genius? Not so much. To my eye, all this brilliance looks like nothing more than just oh. simple wrote copying ah probably i see okay of someone else's work mm, this ah genius makes a good point yeah maybe you know he's still out there you know i, I see where he's coming from I, I i i i kind of agree with him actually you know it does seem like they're copying off their last album with uh, with not really expanding it much for me the song is a light smiley ball to a strong shrug stop rhyming Shit sounds corny as fuck, and it completely destroys the illusion for me. Ah, it's finally my time to step in. What's up, you guys? So this song did indeed grow on me. It's a smiley ball. I love the large instrumentation. I feel like it is very similar to what they were doing, but it is a new grand uh, large statement that, once again, knowing the context of what this whole album is about, uh, actually shows that it isn't just fiction, and it's going for something that's supposed to be a statement and a message, which makes the rhyming make more sense uh, to this whole album. Um, as the last album just sort of felt like, you know, a collection of songs and maybe it was a bit more artistically driven, but because they are trying to make, uh, more anthemic stuff here, the, the rhyming all of a sudden actually, uh, it, it isn't just a, a random, boring, useless tactic that was just thrown on because he all of a sudden had a concussion. Uh, it does actually seem to have a purpose to this album. So I would like to retract my previous statement. That's actually pretty good for Muse. Next song, Time is Running Out. <laughs> Bro, this percussion sounds like dog shit, dude. Chocolate starfish! Yeah, I agree with what Gil said. The sound of this is great. Uh, you have a prediction? I'll give this album a light seven. Right now, it's in the direction of I love some of the sound choices here. I think that they make a lot of sense. They they work for the 2000s. I don't think they've aged well in the slightest. Uh, in fact, I'd say that I'd argue that like the, the previous album has aged well, and immediately this one do hasn't. And, and you may be saying, Brad, you're just going and expecting to hate it. I'm trying my best with this crap. But admittingly, the cheesy rhyming, it kills it. It kills the experience. As much as you would like to just push it to the side, it's weak. There's a reason why it worked on the last project and it doesn't work here. Just saying. It's one of those things to analyze. So much pop music rhymes. Just curious if you like any pop that does it. Out, absolutely. Because pop isn't going for a, a large, ambitious, like, like journey and, and concept. If, if I'm trying to feel my way through the end of, ends of the earth, who the fuck is rhyming while the earth is ending? You know what I mean? It's it's just one of those weird, like, logical things that as soon as you put it together, you're like, oh yeah, I guess that doesn't really make sense, does it? And it's one of the reasons why the last album worked so well, because it felt like he was, like, f like freely singing and flowing through the entire thing. Like, ah, it's like things are crumbling around him. It's not like, we're gonna fucking die, I feel a dick. Did I'm contradicted. I am a dick. Did am I supposed to feel like the world is crumbling around me during this crap? Short answer, no. I think this came down to my expectation of the album and the concept being not what I thought it was or what a lot of people thought it was. Uh, but actually understanding the real meaning behind this crap uh, makes this sort of irrelevant as this song calls comes off more as a call to action, which makes the choices make a lot more sense. Mary, she always calls my bluff. She's always boring and stuff. Oh yeah, I brought it one step further than the killers. That's right. Jealousy, turning saints into the sea. Chat, stop trying to sell it up. You're just making him nitpick more. 
What is up with you two invading all of our iPods like 10 years ago? Bro, I will never forget that. Especially since as a kid, I had no idea how to take it off my air, uh, my iPod. So I just had to skip the songs every time. That, that shit was evil. You know what? Dynamic makes a really good point. Why don't I just review the album now and save a bunch of time? All right, I'd like to review this album now. Um, I am feeling a zero out of 10. Dog Now post it on the Muse subreddit. Returns be like you're being too kind. It's like they took what makes rock good out of these songs. That they've taken the raw performative energy of the last project and killed it with a pillow. And what's left is, sure, more grand. It's more polished, it's more calculated, and I hate it. Some decent musical moments, but I honestly think that this is a step down even from the last song. I think it's annoying as shit. I think that the singing, the screaming, sounds absolutely awful. Like, he's trying way too fucking hard. I don't like this song, but I do still have hopes for this album. I just don't think this is great. I just don't think this is a great track. It's like a, yeah, it's like a five. Like a five, maybe a five minus. Song grew a lot, really solid rock song. I can actually kind of visualize the, uh, like what they were going for and sure it's very different from what they were doing before, um, but I think it's fine. It's, uh, it's a different style, but I don't think it makes it bad. Um, it definitely took some adjusting, but I like the sound of this track. I like the, uh, the, the strong vocals, like uh, a lot of the shit that I was complaining about. Upon re revisiting, I don't have as much of an issue with. Um, but I also see where I was coming from. It's kind of fun watching this because I'm not really cringing at my commentary, which is what I expected to happen, but I'm more like, oh, you know, I, I actually can kind of see where I was coming from at the at the time. Um, just knowing more gives better insight. So, yeah. Sing for absolution. Compliance! We just need your compliance. I'm less offended by the rhyming on this one, but it still doesn't make it as good as it could be. The imagery is okay. I think if you're going to slow it down like this, it's more of an acceptable choice. I, I don't have as big of an issue with a lot of the things here. Piano is fine. It all still is going for that grand T-pose attack bullshit, but you know what? You know, I, it's funny is I actually find this more engaging than the first two tracks, which to me just come off as ch chauvinistic. Um, that's actually not a piano. Yeah, that's not actually a piano. Um, believe it or not, uh, there's a technical term for it that you're not using. Uh, get it right, okay? If you're going to listen to Muse, you better get all the details right, all right? It's called the Orville Rick Rickenbacker piano, all right? Exactly, the song's in 4-4, so it's a bad and boring song. So funny enough, I was looking into it, and the song actually has a really interesting backstory. Originally, it was supposed to be for some like Romeo and Julio, uh, Romeo and Julia, uh, like movie soundtrack, right? But they ended up rejecting it for something else, so they ended up putting this as the fourth track on their album. Um, it it starts off with this really grand, you know, intro. It's a, it's a really beautiful ballad that that comes in, and then um. You know, it's like, we awake, and it has like this grand, you know, explosive outro that ends, uh, that, that then just like, you know, uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm just giving lore. What's the problem? <laughs> uh, anyways, <laughs> my man Julio on the beat. <laughs> I actually like this song. It's a light smiley ball. It's my favorite one so far. It doesn't really steer the concept in any new direction. It's not like that's what's changing it for me. I just think that this ballad style works for their, at least for what they're doing in terms of changing, uh, like changing how they're writing songs, it works better in this context. Um, but I still feel like it's a bit too calculated. Like it just doesn't feel as free.
the things don't feel as earned. They just sort of all feel very predictable. Everything about this is kind of predictable, but, you know, it's still fine. I still think this is my favorite song so far, and I'm really hoping that it, you know, continues in this direction. This album was recorded in a farm which has stables, so really, if you think about it, this album is Baby Jesus and Matt Bellamy is God, just in this story, God left Jesus unfinished. Stockholm Syndrome. This is Devastation in Moments Imagination. You need a truck that's built tough like you. Ford Thunder comes with a 150 horsepower engine to you locally and truck Ford Thunder can fight against storms, apparently. Ford Thunder. Why? <laughs> What's the problem? Get it somehow. <laughs> What's the <laughs> What's the issue? <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna restart the song. Oh whoops. Oh, this isn't the same song. Oh shit, whoops. Sorry about that. Oh <laughs> my bad, you guys. Okay, but actually though, yo, just, bro, you hear that weak ass, quiet ass bass line? Okay, bro, and then, and then just this shit again, okay? I'm just saying, all right, you, you want to get my attention? Apples and oranges for my impatient ass. This works a lot better when you're listening just isolated to the album uh, as a concept. Certainly it's not going for a metal sound, but still. I feel like I make at least a point that it could stick the landing a little stronger. Is it qu is it quiet or are your earbuds uh, not working? Uh, no, no, it's definitely quiet. Have you ever listened to a, a different mixes of albums and compared them? I just think it might be a fun endeavor. Oh yeah, I do that all the time. I do that to insult music on stream, you know? To say, hey, you guys think this is good? Here, listen to a different song for once. I mean, uh, uh, for a comparison. Whoops, that, uh, that, uh, <clears throat> uh yeah. Why does it sound like shit? Seriously. It sounds like dog shit. I wish I had a... It just sounds bad. I like what they're doing, but why is it so poorly executed? There's like a crappy... Like completely hidden underneath compression. There's like bright drums just kind of shittily sandwiched in the mix as well. The kicks are also like completely bare. There's nothing that feels alive about this. Oh, I bet it sounds great live. I just think this recording is terrible. My brother in Christ, you use hi-fi headphones with Spotify? So, so what exactly are you implying here? Because I am streaming on the highest quality here through the highest quality possible headphones. Should I be listening to $5 Walmart uh, earbuds? Huh? I'm 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 confused. What well, what exactly am I doing wrong here by by uh, listening through high budget equipment that is supposed to play it exactly like how it was mixed? Oh oh yeah sure oh, I got you yeah let's listen to the phone speaker and see if it fixes all the problems that's a good idea. I'm not shitting you. That unironically sounds better, though. Maybe they do have a point. Maybe I have to listen on $5 head, uh, fucking Walmart headphones to enjoy the music. Because it actually does sound better. It actually does. <laughs> I'm, I'm streaming it directly to you guys and to myself, and yet it actually sounds better through a head, like, fucking mono phone speakers. I, I don't even know what to make of that. I don't have any clever comments. I'm just, I'm surprised. It's because the average Muse fan- It's because the average Muse fan doesn't care about the sound of music, okay? Uh, it's because most of them are just dirty casuals who listen through $2 headphones. I'm just- I'm just saying, okay? I'm just saying what everybody's thinking, okay? You're offended by the- It's the truth! 
Am I saying that Muse fans are poor? No, I'm saying that they don't care about music and that they have poor taste. There's a difference, okay? I, I would never disrespect the class of my, uh, of Muse fans or anybody of that matter. I have standards. Apple is a Muse ripoff. That was an accident. Can't take it back. Stockholm Syndrome on paper is a good song. It's too bad that music isn't judged by being on paper. It's a shrug for me. Great grand riffs. Some really strong instrumental moments that I would say completely sweep the floor of their new shit. Don't get me wrong. Some of these riffs actually kick, and I personally think that they, they like make their new shit look even worse than it already is. But I find some of the vocals to be so over the top and unpalatable that it's it's just it's completely outside of the realm of existence for me. Combined with the cheesiness, making it just sound unrealistic. Like, I, I don't feel it rooted in reality. It's a six for me, though. I think it's still an okay song. I still feel like it's grand. The presentation is strong, um, but I just don't think it comes together fully. It's in the positive, don't get me wrong. It's just mid as, it's just mid as fuck. All right? Hey, Walter White, what do you think? Uh, what do you think of uh, what the chat's saying? Uh, you know, if you had to give your input. From what I saw. Genius? Not so much. To my eye, all this brilliance looks like nothing more than just simple rote copying. A big insight that uh, a big issue that I have with Muse is that they essentially sound like a parody of themselves. It's hard for them to delve into satire with the music when it's already so ridiculous. Ooh, that is. I'm gonna keep that in the video. That is such a good observation. I, I don't even need to add anything to it. You guys remember back when we believed this album was satire? Good times. Good times. The song's about the same for me though. I don't like it singing all that much. Falling away with you. Next song. It's amazing how these subtle songs that people consider to be the worst of the album I find to be the best of the album because it's like they just tune it down enough for me to actually take it seriously. I, I think that this is a genuinely decent, passionate performance. I, I don't mind this. I say as I casually edit down about 90% of the footage for these songs, yeah, they're not that entertaining. They're safe, uh, but mainly the more context I have for the other ones, the more I like them better. Are the synths not out of place? I agree that the scents on the last songs are completely out of place and dated for the, and, and I'm so glad you brought up Hot Fuss because I do have the same issue with Hot Fuss as some of the scents on Hot Fuss have aged worse than you may like I'm sorry but like you don't even realize if you haven't heard this album in so long like um a, a dynamic do you remember like there's one song with like a, a horrible like synth or even like a vocaloid solo that that because again this album came out 2004 the same exact year as this same year. Like, this This was the trendy sound or whatever. Good drum pattern? Yeah! Anyways, I feel like you could hear this song and kind of get the idea of what I mean. Like, this... I'll just say that Muse is not, uh, above this. Like the like the jackpot synth in the back is actually pretty okay. It's uh, subtle enough. It kind of sounds like a spaceship almost. You know, you can get away with it. I like this part a lot too. This is actually probably my favorite song so far. You're joking, right? The Killers invented alternative rock, to be honest. You're joking, man? Okay. <laughs> you got me. Bad that you like the killers it's not bad that you like any music wow what a shitty payoff dude seriously they took everything that wasn't working about this project and said you know what let's shove that into the end of this song when it really doesn't need it still my favorite song in the i don't like this song all that much returning to it funny enough especially with the other ones growing this one's just sort of shrunk i think that the ending does sound like crap and the rest of the song is boring as shit it's one that i would probably skip every time osmosis jones invented all rock you goddamn right young lady i like Osmosis Jones, ladies and gentlemen, original soundtrack. 
That's Matt Bellamy, by the way. That is. It is. That's true. Yeah, that should. We're gonna save that as the nuclear button. <laughs> it's a very bad audio clip. Interlude. Okay, now they're my bloody Valentine. Next song, Hysteria. Okay, sounds good start. Good start. Why do they always put so much distortion on his voice to where it sounds like he's deep throating the microphone? I'm so sick of it. What the fuck even is that? Who who thought that was a good idea? It sounds so shitty and unnatural. Why does this keep happening? Brad, you need to hear this with the breathing isolated. Do you have like a link to that? You send me on Twitter. I have to listen to it on the phone. You know what I would love? I would love to be able to say that I enjoy these songs without having to compromise. I really would, because I was able to do that about the last project. I was like, you know what? I don't have to make excuses for enjoying this. But in order to say that I enjoy this, I have to work around stuff. The horribly dated production choices, the really awful, overdramatic, cheesy attitude. It's like the shit that I can appreciate about this project. Uh, like the wonderful, and I do mean this, wonderful cohesion of this album. It is brilliantly assembled in terms of the track placement, in terms of the pacing, it is so well done. But the songs themselves, I can't listen to these without giving up something, without having to compromise, and I hate that. You know I hate compromise, all right? If there's something I don't like about a song, then usually there's a reason not to return to it. That's, that's about the level of stimulation I need to stay, you know, entertained by this album. I'm just saying. My brother played only Muse on an eight-hour car drive with my dad. Your dad said it was torture. <laughs> Why are we just acting like Muse is the worst band ever now? Like, jeez. Gil, I'm sorry, but you gotta understand the law of large numbers. There's a thousand people here in an echo chamber of negativity. People who are speaking positively are completely drowned out. There's an ecosystem going on with the comments. Don't take it personally. It's just the way that things are currently. Once I say that this is the best album of all time, and I give it a 10 at the end of the day, people are going to change their minds like this because it's now the trendy thing to do. Yo, see? People will be loving news. Hysteria is one of the hardest songs on this album. Let's start with that. It's got some of the best riffs. It's got some of the best stuff going on conceptually. The vocal effects suck. And if I was to give this a smiley ball, it would mean that I would listen to it on my own time, which I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I just straight up wouldn't. <laughs> There's better songs, dude. There's better Muse songs that are more consistent all the way through. Why would I want to? Why would I want to compromise for this dated crap? I'm just saying. Hey, they hated Jesus because he spoke the truth. Okay, I'm just saying. Right. Blackout. Once again, I'm liking the subtle moments just immediately better. Let's hope he doesn't butcher it this time. <laughs> You're dated and no, I'm not butthurt at all. Incoming editor, Brad. Look, if if I am cutting myself in to say that I like this album, I hope you guys understand that, like, that should confirm some things to you. First of all, that means I absolutely go into albums expecting to hate it for the sake of comedy. And two, 
It means that I'm not going to stop doing it because it means that I can go in and I can edit it if I really do mentally change my opinion. Because what I tell you right now is exactly how I feel. But if I'm not having fun listening to the album, and let me tell you right now, I will not be having fun if I'm sitting here silent as fuck and not having a good time talking with the chat and chilling out with you guys. All right? I would rather have a good time while recording and make good entertaining content than sit here quiet with my analytic glasses on. Let's be real here, okay? Plus, that means you gotta watch the video again if you're in the stream if you want the full final, final review. You know what I'm saying? That means I'm milking twice. Twice the amount of views for each video. I'm an innovator. Okay, I'm a genius. Could have made Donda. I knew someone was going to make the Radiohead nude compa uh, compar comparison, but the song came out four years before it. I don't hear it. Funny enough, I actually don't hear it. It's just a slow song by Muse. It, it makes perfect sense in this album, so... Yeah, exactly. I'm a huge fan of over-the-top reactions and just truthful communication. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm telling you exactly how I feel with the album. If it changes, it changes. Hey, new viewer here. You can go ahead and leave now. Brad said like five minutes ago that this is the worst thing he's heard since Earth by Lil Dicky and he's been banning Muse fans evil stuff. Um, <laughs> I just realized that's by someone who is definitely not a new viewer. What's up? Welcome back. Did you guys see my new post, by the way? Wow, that Origin of Symmetry album was great, but I don't think I have time to continue exploring the Muse discography. It's unfortunate that we gotta stop, um, that we gotta give up where we were, because who knows what, uh, how far we could have gotten into this discography, you know? Exactly, 80% of Muse fans give up before they actually get to the good albums. It's true. Do Muse fans just gaslight themselves into thinking it's better than other music? I've been told that that's a very um, insulting and awful thing to say to Muse fans and just fans of any music in general. Uh, so yes, absolutely. Uh, without without a doubt in my mind. Am I allowed to like music that I like? Um, oh, hold on. Hold on, guys. Wait, one sec. Sorry. Um, I have to play the sponsor. I'm contractually obligated. Uh, Our Amazon Zoa Energy deal of the day has been up. live. Wait Available a minute. now. Click the link in the bio. The number one Bruh. fastest growing energy drink in the game. Amazon. The number one deal of the day on Amazon right now. 24 hours. The deal of the day. All flavors of Zoa. All Zoas. Our forecast for Zoa Energy will be a $1 billion brand valuation. <laughs> Thank you, guys. All right, all right. Uh... Not sure if this guitar works. Just thinking about the guitar guy absolutely murdering the guitar in this super calm song and make it's making you laugh. Technically, every video Brad makes reviewing an album is an advertisement for the album. Yeah, tell the people claiming my videos about that. Some look at this. I gotta show you guys because I'm so pissed on this shit. Someone got a copyright claim on this, right? I look and I'm like, oh cool. It's you know, it, it sucks, but it's only like you know, 20 seconds. I'll just mute it, right? Cool. I go and I look to mute it. And it's like, are you sure you want to mute this three-minute segment of your video? Because that's, of course, where the where the content's found. It starts not even where the song starts, by the way. Okay. Because this wasn't even the starting point. So it detects it before and then says you have to mute two full minutes of the video. Or else, of course, you know, you lose out on all your ad money. Better get that Patreon back up and running. Trust me, I am not financially doing poorly, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, the fact that I'm able to monetize my reviews of albums with, like, direct audio stream to you guys in the first place is actually insane. Here's something you won't believe. Because the song didn't do anything stupid, I actually like it. Here's something you guys won't believe. Because the song didn't actually do anything stupid, I don't really care for it. It's more of a shrug. Alright, just moving on. Whatever. Next! Butterflies and Hurricanes. Next song. Change everything you are and everything you were. Your number has been called. Fights and battles have begun. Revenge will surely come. Your hard times are ahead. Best, you've got to be the best. You've got to change the world. And use this chance to be heard. Your time is now. Uh, 
I've been roaming around, I've been looking down at all I see. I like this goofy ass piano line. It really sells the epic nature of this song. Matt Bellamy wrote this album after 9-11. It came out 2004, that was obvious. I get it. Because the shadowy T-posed people are actually, uh, are the terrorists. And the world is no more like it used to be. A racist racial. <laughs> Wait, Matt did an interview with Alex Jones? Guys, pause the music. That's a joke, right? That's gotta be Cap. I, I don't believe it. I don't see any proof. So, I'm just gonna assume that that was, uh, Sit post until further notice. It's been scrubbed. Okay, let me look at this. Uh, some of these things are just too blatant to ignore. I mean, felt, you know, I kind of had like an instinct in me that kind of told me something wasn't quite right with the world, something wasn't quite right with the news media and the way it presents information to us. Oh, shut up. Ad blocker detected. <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, I, I agree with you, your theory on false flag operations. I mean, I've always had a, a personal um, interest in this because my, my uncle was actually killed by the IRA. So really, I, I think I'll kind of agree with you on, on the, the September 11th. Uh, it's definitely, you know, whether or not it's completely made to happen, whether it's allowed to happen, I'm, I'm not quite sure uh, as, to, as to which of those two it is, but I think there's definitely a lot of evidence, a lot of questions that need to be asked, or what, questions that need to be answered. Well, I agree. Um, what do you think of uh, Hugo Chavez, who, you know, try as they might to demonize him, he's basically given free heating oil to the American people and helping his people. He came out now, and I know he's seen my documentaries. I've talked to people that, that have delivered them to him. He's coming out and saying, look, controlled demolition. The evidence is the military-industrial complex stood to gain from this. He said it needs to be investigated. Why do you think they're struggling so hard to not let it be investigated? Well, I mean, it's clearly, it's clearly, I, I mean, my perspective of view is it's not necessarily the, um, the people that we think are our leaders, uh, you know, your George Bushes and the Tony Blairs. I, I think there's a, oh, yeah, they're a, puppets. I think there's a group of people behind, behind these people. I, I think we're talking about a, an outsourced, um, you know, something like the NSA, these kind of groups which have been given unbelievable amounts of money to do work behind our backs and sometimes behind our government's backs. And, um, and sometimes they do, they, they get a chance to do these things without any, having to be accountable at all. And, and I think some, some of these agencies have just literally, They've, let, they've been allowed to run free with, with, with a, lot of, a lot of our money, and it's getting out of control, and these people need to be reined in, you know? Well, absolutely. We're talking to the lead singer, Matt Bellamy of Muse, one of the lead acts at ACL. Uh, what do you think of the Texas heat out there? You know, obviously in, in America. <laughs> Suddenly the messages behind Will of the People makes a lot more sense. It's a, it's a very big money-making industry, and, um, and obviously war is, is a means to, uh, to bring in control and control over the, over the domestic population, but also power over the world. Matt Bellamy. Tell me, what response did you get after you went public uh, wearing the Terror Storm t-shirt? What response did you get from your fans, your supporters, the media, others? Was there any backlash? Uh, I mean, not, nothing really. So I mean, a lot of the fans of the band are kind of are quite aware of, of, um, of some of my uh, ideas and thoughts uh, outside of uh, the mainstream, if you like. And um, so it's really it's, it's quite a bit of support there, really. I mean... Um, Obviously, uh, when you're doing interviews uh, with with more mainstream um, uh, 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 news uh, companies or whether it be a magazine or something like that, they, they tend to steer clear of those kind of questions anyway. You know, they tend to just avoid all of that stuff, and they, they tend to want to talk about more uh, more shallow uh, subjects, which is fair enough because I, I suppose that's what helps sell their their magazines and so forth. But. Uh, but with, with, with the hardcore fans of the band, I mean, they, they seem to be quite uh, interested in this stuff anyway. And a lot of a lot of the people on the message board seem to be uh, uh, sometimes more clued up than me. I think, which is uh, which is uh, very encouraging. Out of the mainstream views, I think it's out of the mainstream that people have courage. I know a lot of other big rock stars and people who know all about 9/11 and contact me about it, but they're scared to death and won't go public. Uh, I mean, I commend your courage because. Uh, yeah, your views are really mainstream. The majority of Americans and British in major polls, as well as Canadians, believe there's a cover-up, and a majority of those believe it's an inside job. The problem is the majority of those that know it's an inside job are cowards, public and speaking. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks a lot. It's great.
Wild, yeah. Wild, wild stuff, dude. God damn. <laughs> yeah, Gil, this is wow. <laughs> oh, damn. I can't even believe this. I can't believe what I just witnessed. Shit. <laughs> Do we... Wow. You regret bringing up the fact they made this album after 9-11? <laughs> I think I know what the shadowy, pig, uh, the shadowy figures actually represent now. Um, <laughs> I think they represent the media and the, the large corporations covering up everything that's actually going on. And he's actually looking... Uh, he's he's the lone soul looking at these these large figures who are controlling who have absolution power over everything it all makes sense i'm in shock dude what do i even say about what I, how do i even continue this with a straight face i know like <laughs> what the hell i always thought their earlier work was based on fiction and that's why i like the overdramatic presentation but holy that's that's flat out disappointing that is Wow. Yeah, I gotta admit, this this album is ruined. I don't want to listen to this crap anymore. I've, um, a part of me has died, and it's not even like, oh, oh, I'm, like, oh, I told you so, oh, Muse, no, it's more like, what the fuck? I have a, I, I have a feeling that most people just don't even know what the fuck I just saw is real. Like, it's just, like, a a, 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 a a overwhelming feeling of disappointment, and I feel like I'm just here, like, like, wow. This, this is, this, so this is what's really going on, huh? I, I, I don't feel mentally like I'm able to even rate what I just heard. So I'm just gonna listen to this, the rest of this album with you guys, and then figure it out offline. Next song is Small Print. Bro, you have to distinguish between someone's views and the music. Relax. This motherfucker thinks he's making a movement like he's Rage Against the Machine, dude. This guy's... You gotta be shitting me. Yeah, maybe if we were listening to, to, to something that wasn't, like, supposed to be politically charged. You know what I mean? Like, I, I mean, I'm glad that you're able to, to make that extreme, difficult distinction. You know, congrats. Symmetry and absolution serve as the before and after for 9-11 for Matt Bellamy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, something felt a little bit off. I, I, I will say I told you so, you know, but I got to say I couldn't have told you it was that. Oh, sweet mother of God. I could not have told you it was that. Y'all are a bunch of pussies. Radiohead fans are cancer. Hope you've seen the light because no one really cares. They're just pretending. Sell. I'll sell your memories for 15 pounds per year, but you can keep the bad days. I'm bending the truth. You're to blame. Oh, the light. You know, this album's starting to make sense now. I really, really, I wish it didn't. I, I, I just, I just wish it didn't. Just straight up, like, I'd, I'd be cool with thinking that this is just ramblings of a madman. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where my reaction ends. I'll tell you guys what I think about the rest of this album, but I don't think there's anywhere else to go here. Uh... You know, I will say that, like, going in for the sake of comedy, sure, it might direct things in a certain way, but I gotta say, man, having the entire album be recontextualized like that, I just can't listen to it the same right now. That's about it. That's all I got for you. I'll let you guys know what I think. I'll, I'll give a re-listen, but wow, that was just, that was rough. I absolutely made the right call here. Uh, offline, I re-listened to this album, and here is my full review of it. Um, I'll just start with the score. It's a six plus for me, which is way higher than I thought it would be upon returning, especially with the shock that I felt. Um, but you know, even during the end here, I was kind of figuring it out and sh sure it completely recontextualizes everything I heard. And I, and again, I really do think I made the right choice because everything just sort of changed with how I listened to the album. Um, but I don't think it was entirely a terrible thing. Um, yeah, I mean, shit, people, people listen to fucking weirdos make music all the time and this is no exception. Um, the guy's kind of a nut, but uh, but he turns it into entertaining art. And that's really all I could ask for. What I can't ask for, though, is the last four whatever songs being boring as shit uh, and making me go... 
So six plus. Thanks guys for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.